Well, certainly you could call our office. Okay. You can call us at 301-779-2100. 301-779-2100. Um, and, and certainly we'll take your name and we can tell you when we want you to be at the Sports and Learning mm -hmm. Center. We're looking for people to be there at about 6.30 on Saturday morning. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The run will actually take off. People will be leaving at 8.30. Mm -hmm. So folk that are looking to volunteer, we'd like to have them there between mm -hmm. 6.30 and 7. Well, what's the uh, length of the, uh, you said five meters? Five it's a 5K run. And, and, and how, how long would the average person take, uh, you know? <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I'd, I'd need a car to do a five. <laughs> so, you know. That's what I was thinking. I, I, do, I do the one mile thinking, walk. I was thinking yeah. by myself. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, the, exactly. There is a one a one mile walk, walk yeah, and a five k run. So uh, I think that the, um, the young man who won the event last year he uh, may have ran it in about uh, twenty minutes. Oh wow. wow! Yeah, so so <laughs> must have been an athlete. So, so you need must a lot have been of an athlete. <laughs> exactly. need a lot of stops there, you know, <laughs> refreshing <laughs> stops. Indeed, <laughs> we we have <laughs> we do have runners. Sometimes uh, high schools come out. Kids uh, from high school oh, okay. track teams right. come out, uh, and and uh, sometimes they're competitive runners who go from uh, you know 5K to 5K in the region, and they'll they'll come out and participate as well. Uh, and then there's folks like me who can't. I, you'd have to be chasing me for me to run. Other than that, it's a walk, uh, and I do the one mile. Uh, and they did have water at stations, and I, yeah, I stop no, at every one of them. It's 8 to 80, right? Yeah, yeah. Young, and, <laughs> young and young at heart. Right. Come on out. Come on out. <laughs> Absolutely. 8 oh. to 80, that's the, that's the main thing, that, that uh, everyone can participate in something like that. It, this, this is a positive thing. Like yes. you say, this is just sixth year, and uh, I, I think people know how important it is to have uh, – uh, organization doing things like that because Family Crisis Center Rex has been on here before he's made appeals of yes. things that uh, that they're doing and the problems that they have but the main thing is getting the people involved yes. make them aware of the thing most of us think in terms of hey it didn't happen to me it happened they read it in the paper it happened to somebody else but it can happen to you and see, they, they don't realize that, you know, it, <laughs> nobody's immune to this. And what, something like this is very vital to the community of bring us all together. Yeah, it really makes a difference. And, you know, we had a crime committed in my neighborhood recently. Um, and y you don't think about it until it happens right. to you or somebody mm -hmm. you know. But it's good to have things in place, ready right. to go. Yeah. Uh, exactly. Because it's hard to put it together at the last minute or, you know, in the middle of a crisis. So it's... It's good to have it going, and, and I think this is the kind of effort that really can make a difference. Well, you get involved in, in, in uh, uh, physical crisis, for instance, like uh, fires and water damages and things like that. Do you, you, how do you uh, operate along those lines? The cri when you say crisis center, what, what, what kind of crisis uh, basically are you involved with? Rex. Yeah, I, well, <laughs> you, you, you know, um, Brother Brown, the, the Family Crisis Center was founded in 1981 mm -hmm. and with the purpose of providing emergency shelter mm -hmm. for okay. individuals that are fleeing, women and children that right. are fleeing domestic right. violence. And uh, over the years, uh, we've literally had to serve thousands of people right. who have had to flee yeah. since inception. Mm. Um, and, and so I think that what has happened over the years, there has been a great deal of awareness that has been brought about and uh, about domestic violence and the impact that it has on the community. And a lot of times people, a, as you said, you know, no one is immune. No. Sometimes people do say- well, On all levels, all economic levels too. That's right. See, some people figure, you know, <coughs> if you're on a lower economic level, you know, you're more prone to that. But it, it happens <laughs> all the way down. Oh. And back. That you is know. correct. All you have to do is read the paper and you can see it happens on, on all levels. That's right. And so we provide a 24 hour hot crisis hotline. Mm -hmm. People can call us at any time. That number, 301 731 1203. So people can call in if they're needing help. Uh, we provide counseling services. For what both. kind of counseling service? Well, you know, a lot of times when someone has been uh, a victim of domestic mm -hmm. violence, they have been. Uh, Trump their self-esteem, right, yeah. their self-esteem has been broken down, and so our counselors come in and help them rebuild uh, their self-esteem and kind of help them restructure uh, 
their li perhaps their living conditions. A lot of times when, when individuals come to see us, they've mm -hmm. had to flee their home. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so we will help them uh, right. reestablish. It really, is, it's about uh, empowerment mm -hmm. and helping individuals uh, to restore, regain the power over their, over their lives. Mm -hmm. Well, how do, you, do you respond, for instance, if a neighbor knows that they have a neighbor that uh, has this problem and uh, the, the neighbor themselves don't want to, you know, uh, they want to be independent as possible and handle it, but they can't handle it. That's right. And it, uh, when I say that, I think in terms of your senior citizen. Mm -hmm. A lot of senior citizens are in homes by themselves and mm -hmm. things, things. And people in the neighborhood know what they're going through. And uh, do you get involved in that? Well, a lot of times we, we um, if it is a domestic violence situation mm -hmm. and, and we were called and, and asked to provide services, yes. we certainly would. Mm -hmm. I think that what the county is striving to do uh, is to, to tie all of the services together. Right. We have, you know, we have partnership and receive funding from the Department of Family Services, mm -hmm. the Department of Social Services, wow. the state's attorney's office, mm -hmm. the office of the sheriff. And so we are a service provider to the county. Mm -hmm. And so if we can't provide services to them directly, then what we're going to try to do is uh, put them in contact with the with agency the that agency. would provide the services that mm -hmm. they need. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the thing is, too, that we can all play a role. Uh, you know, domestic violence is something that, that really has an impact not only on the individual, but on that family and on the community, because right. a lot of times, you know, if you look at these guys that grow up and they're committing violent crimes, they frequently come from a household where there was domestic violence yeah. in the house. And mm -hmm. so, you know, one of the things we need to understand is that we need to take steps to break that cycle of violence as early as possible. Don't do the, you know, my name is Bennett and I ain't in it thing. Right. I'm not saying you should do, go directly intervene either. You can always call the police. And we're also trying to get, you know, with the Project Safe Sunday effort, faith community uh, involvement. Yeah, you know, right. really, we've got, we've got yeah. over 900 churches in Prince George's County. Wow. Uh, I know they're all committed to a social gospel and an involvement in people's lives and making a difference. Mm -hmm. And one of the things we're trying to get them to do is, on Sunday, October 10th, to have a dialogue about, uh, uh, you know, actually it's Sunday, I think it's October 11th, have a dialogue about domestic violence. Talk about it. Talk about what the scriptures say about it. Talk about what our response should be to that. And also to, to hand out numbers about where to get help, like the Family Crisis Center. Well, well what, what about the, uh, the sometimes the victims of domestic violence? The children. Mm -hmm. I mean, do you have a program? Some of them need to uh, have counseling, mm -hmm. you know, because they're in an environment that they're not responsible for, but they're affected by it. Certainly. At the Family Crisis Center, we do have a youth counselor. Her name is Miss Loretta Baum, mm -hmm. who uh, have an on, has an ongoing program uh, engaging the kids. A lot of times, uh, when you talk about counseling for children, uh, she may not sit down and just talk right them about what they've seen, mm -hmm. but allow them opportunities and activities in which they have a, a chance to express themselves and express their feelings about the situation they may have been in. Mm -hmm. Well, how, how would you uh, family get involved with? They have to be uh, requested by someone in the immediate family, or can neighbors do that? Well, you know, neighbors, uh, you'd be surprised, neighbors see a whole lot of things, you know, that's going on. And, surely. You know, and then, like, uh, Mr. Ivey knows that they get a lot of information mm -hmm. about certain things that when uh, that occurred, uh, they go to the neighborhood and they can, they can find out, you know, down the street. Yeah, because people are, are constantly surveying the neighborhood themselves. I know I do it myself. I would go in and I look around, you know what yeah. I mean? And I see a strange car and yeah. I know they got all, they got three cars, but they're, none of them are polka dot, you know. I say, mm -hmm. what, what is right. that doing there, you right. know? Right. So uh, I, I'm just saying the utilization of that, yeah. People have fears of doing that. Surely. You know? mm -hmm. and wh what we ask is that if an individual is faced with a domestic violence situation, a domestic uh, situation, abusive situation, mm -hmm. is that they make the call to us. Mm -hmm. Because a lot of times if the neighbor calls, the individual may still be trying to deal with it. Problem. And, right. Yeah. And, and, and perhaps may not be ready to move or seek help mm -hmm. or seek assistance. So for we want that individual to call and say, this is what I'm dealing with and I want some change. Mm 